Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. As the world turns, mother and daughter duo Terry Garber and Jen Landon are here today to reminisce about their time working together in Oakdale. Terry Garber's acting career began when she played the part of Allison Linden on Texas. She hit it big in 1985 when she landed the role as Ashton Maine in the miniseries, the ABC miniseries, I believe, North and South. In addition to that role, Terry has appeared on Dynasty as Leslie Carrington, General Hospital as Victoria Parker, and Santa Barbara as Suzanne Collier, to name a small few. Jen Landon attended NYU's Tisch School of the Arts, where she studied ex experimental theater, but she left early when her first audition landed her a three-year contract on As the World Turns. She won three consecutive Daytime Emmy Awards for that role. She has since appeared in Jason Reitman's feature film, The Front Runner, as well as recurred on numerous television shows, including Banshee, one of my favorites, Animal Kingdom, and is currently starring on CBS's FBI Most Wanted and in season four of Yellowstone on Paramount+. Plus. Can't tell you how much I love her role on that show. I'm so excited that both Terry and Jen are here with us today. Please welcome to the locker room, Jen Landon and Terry Garber. Hello. Hi. 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 So nice to see you both. It's Thank so you. Nice. It's so great to be here. Yeah. Do you remember meeting each other for the first time? Oh my God, do you remember? I think it was in the hallway at the studio. Probably, but it was probably like six in the morning. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I just, I mean, I was rehearsal. I just remember loving you immediately. I, I had the same yeah. feeling. And it you know what I remember? Sad. I remember you coming up to me because Jen was so young and so full of energy and full of everything. And she comes to me and says, you know, if you ever really feel like crying, but you can't really cry, listen to the song River by Joni Mitchell. Do you remember saying that to me? <laughs> no, of course I would say that. And like, why? But like, endeared by that it's so sweet it was so sweet that every time i listen to that song which i hear it a lot uh, i think of you you know what that makes me really happy because i was um i mean i i'm still such a big Joni fan and like me too. now my i now my kind of um reflective emotional anthem is um both sides now or um uh -huh. Is it both sides or both sides now? Whatever. And she's record. She wrote it when she was like nineteen, um, and record and recorded it, and then she recorded it again. Yes. It's the best, isn't it? The best. The best. It's so oh. like chilling and moving, uh -huh. and her voice is like whiskey and cigarettes uh -huh. and orchestra and, and, and two you know. back to back, and the kind of what they mean on either side. Yes. So great. Oh. Were let's you, cry, were you a fan? everyone. Let's cry. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's cry in unison, please. <laughs> Terry, what um, do you remember about your audition, or did you have to audition for the role of Iris? She's a big deal. No, yeah, right. So, did I, you know? Uh, did you know Chris? I knew Chris. Chris and I were on Texas together, awesome. and uh, so he just called me in one day and just you know i got a call to to do this part and i was thrilled it was such a great funny part it wasn't supposed to be funny but it was funny her, na her name hilarious. her name is pretty funny i yeah that, <laughs> that pretty much rules i mean like where do you pull dombrowski out of you know if, yeah, really <laughs> Terry and I talked backstage, but Chuck, one of uh, my fans, one of the locker room fans uh, mentioned to Terry, you know, here she was returning to the studio where she filmed Texas with Chris Stoutman. What was it like walking back in there after all those years? You know, I didn't know that it was where I had shot Texas because I was, it was a long time ago, but I walked in and it was really familiar. The whole thing was really familiar to me. And someone said, this is where Texas shot. And I was like, of course, you know, yeah, it was just so familiar to me. And, you know, it just felt great to, to walk into a studio, <laughs> you know, and, and go to work. 
That even felt if it great. was in Brooklyn. <laughs> even if I mean, yeah, those early morning calls were a schlep to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you share a car with? Eldo Ray Estes, who ah, did our makeup. Yes. I was um, going to say, you were way uptown by Eldo. Yes. I remember that. Yes, because you, I invited you and Eldo over to my apartment for, we, and you came no. over, and we just had like a lot of food, and we just chatted, mm -hmm. and that was sort of the day, the afternoon. It was, it, I, it, I don't know. I just like have such like heart memories. I mean, yeah, I was so young and it was the kind of biggest, most intense commitment yeah. of my life up to that point, even more than high school in some ways, because it's so consuming. Well, that was your college. I mean, you know, like I said, yeah. you got you got it literally while you were about to really embark at NYU. I mean, I had been at NYU sort of sort of on and off, but I just, you know, conserve, and that was a conservatory, but that's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And, you know, <laughs> you like do a scene every yeah. two weeks, you rehearse a lot, you know? <laughs> so it's like 30 pages a day. Yeah, every at day. least. Burning that, at least, exactly. And, and then you go home and um, you're basically sort of joyously trauma bonded to everybody that you work with. Yes. <laughs> so sleep deprived so sleep deprived and you you can't learn the scripts too far in advance because it's your short-term memory that you have to use so you get what i would do is i would get like the scripts for the week or something and i would yeah. start with just the first day read it through you know and then highlight and then write my notes and then learn the second read the second learn the first then the next um. day learn the second that I'd read through already and read through the third day. And it, it was, it was very hard at the end. It was very hard. I found that there was a lot more dialogue than had been previously. You mean went on that second run that we had? Uh, no, on like my third or fourth run. Um, oh. The very end. The very end. Yeah, wow. where where I'm stealing your baby, or I was like, <laughs> you know, the old normal thing. Um, of I course. was selling yeah, your baby is what yeah. I was doing. <laughs> yes. You know what? Uh, you were just a stage a little mom. Better. You wanted. Yes. A little better. You were selling your kid out to commercials. You wanted to pay for the college. <laughs> yes. Jen, what do you remember about auditioning for this role while you were in college, and then I assumed you had to screen test. God, you know, screen tests, it's funny. I feel like I've still gotten, I have still gotten away with never having to do one of those officially in some way. It's really- Did, did you not have to because they hired you as recurring or did you? Um, I didn't have to, I didn't have to because I was hired for a day player. Oh my I was gosh. hired for just a one or a guest star, one episode. And, um, you know, I like, came up with an insane backstory for mm. for for the my one day and they ended up writing that backstory which is crazy without there ever being a a conversation and i found that that has happened often in things because when you're recurring guest stars you have no idea where your story is going or what's going to happen and um but the audition was uh it was like my first, it was my first theatrical audition through my, through my agent. Um, wow. And I remember uh, I got to the studio, which I think was its own fascinating subway experience. Yes. Uh, I, feel like I, <laughs> you know, I think I was there, but I remember, you know, Barry Clay Bolin reading with her and then I didn't have a headshot and I gave her a photo of me and my my dog, so <laughs> my little bulldog. And uh, she was like, are you available next Wednesday or something? And I was like, well, I have school that day. <laughs> and then I was like, what am I saying? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. totally available. Um, so thanks. And, and, and they smartly saw a lot of potential because, you know, yeah. three, three years. 
they saw potential or like a very unique haircut. Sometimes I really <laughs> do feel like I'm not, I had long blonde hair moments before and I cut it yeah. off and I felt like I can tell the moment I'd walk into casting room sometimes because then a lot of actresses didn't have really short hair. I just felt like they were like, oh, yeah. this one is doing something. I wasn't actually doing anything. I just um, cut my hair. <laughs> what do you remember working opposite one another? That it was, you know, it was always great. It was just great. It was like we worked really hard mm -hmm. and um, would always be running lines and we just worked really hard and it was really, it was fun. Yeah. I had fun doing it. We worked really hard, but working together, I felt like was so easy. And, yes. and if I'm remembering it incorrectly, you should tell me, you'd be like, no, you were a nightmare. Um, <laughs> but I just remember it being easy. And I just, you know, that sofa in the makeup room. Yes. Like right on the other side of, of Eldo's desk. I just yes. remember sitting there for so many like, wonderful private conversations amidst, you know, you know, in this very the chaos crazy. that was going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And absolutely. Um, I think I had to not laugh. We, we had to do this thing where we had to really ground our relationship, right? And it's a soap opera, so it's obviously dramatic. But you were able to, f you know, find so much levity and comedy inside of those scenes and um i feel like for many many tag shots you know the dreaded <laughs> soap tag like fill it for 12 seconds um, <laughs> don't move that don't, don't with, move with that tears it became don't laugh like you should <laughs> always do something brilliant and i used to call it Thank like you. before dinosaur mouth where i would just try to plant my upper lip <laughs> over the bottom one so that I wouldn't start laughing. That's, That's hilarious. Funny. That's really funny. Terry, did you work with Chris as an actor? Um, I know you both acted on Texas, but did you work in story together? No, but we became friends. He, Michael Woods, um, yeah. myself, and there was one other person whose name has just flown out of my head, which happens Harley a lot. Harley Jane? Harley Jane? No, it wasn't Harley Jane. It was a, it was a man. It, he was dark hair, married to Don Steinberg. I can't remember his oh. name. Oh my God! Who? What is his name? Is Don. Um, um, casting at Sony. Yes. Wait, Don. <laughs> that Don. I know, I, I know this guy through Don. Small Dude, world. I can't think of his name. I can't think of his name. Anyway, we became friends, and we hung out. Michael had an apartment in California. And when I decided to go move to California, I stayed with Michael and Christopher and this unknown name person I can't remember. Um, and we what, share the couch. It would be like, okay, it's your night for the couch. It's your night for the bed. Husband, night. You said Don Steinberg? Yes. Yeah. Let's see if, it, I mean, I have no idea. It'll I, come I, up. It's dark curly hair. It's mm. not too, is, Curling. It, is it so maybe yeah i but that's so funny jen that you know him what was it my, like one of coming to work for chris it was great i mean he was just you know he kept bringing me back so i was really thankful for that and that was really cool um he was a very hard worker yeah yeah seriously seriously um one of our fans, David, just said Joni was honored at the Kennedy Center. So that should be airing soon. Oh, yeah, that's great. Even, David was the name of the guy who I can't yes. remember his name. It was <laughs> David something. This is really I, horrible. This I love really that, good. though. And it's I'm, horrible. So, no, don't, don't worry about it. So um, for both of you, I'll start with you, Terry. Who or what um, influenced you on becoming an actress? It's a really ridiculous story, but <laughs> I went with my family to see Fiddler on the Roof in the movies. And when we left there, I said to my mother that I wanted to become an Orthodox Jew. And that I want, yes. And she said to me, well, you know, you're going to have to be kosher. And I said, okay, I'll be kosher. So she would drive me to Miami Beach. I lived in Miami. She would drive me to Miami Beach to get my chicken and we would cook it. And one night, several 
months later, she made shrimp scampi and I said, oh, screw it. You know, I'm not kosher anymore. And what it was, was the truth was I wanted to be in Fiddler on the Roof. That was what it was. And that's what inspired me. That's a great story. I love that. Thanks. And Jen, I mean, I know, I know your dad was an actor, but you yeah. know, for you, what, what was there a, a moment that you just said, I know what I want to do? God, you know, before I answer that, Terry, I have to say just the sort of, uh, I don't know if it's irony or what, but that you ended up working at JC Studios. Yeah. Yes. In, was in, right. in the yes. orthodox <laughs> neighborhood. neighborhood. In, I know. I mean, short of short of certain boroughs in Williamsburg um, or certain areas in Williamsburg. So you did. I, I did. We <laughs> were all kosher <laughs> because you couldn't order a turkey and cheese sandwich. The delivery radius, it wasn't. Yeah. Really yes, enough. the delivery radius wasn't yeah. real far. Jen, that is brilliant. Thank you so That's much. Hysterical. That That's hysterical. That's hysterical, but it is so true. It happened for you. <laughs> Thank so you very much. Awesome. My mother will be very happy. <laughs> um. That's very funny. I was, I, well, that's a separate thing. I very much. <laughs> that's a separate yeah, that's subject. Yeah, separate. My dreams <laughs> bought mitzvah as a, as a child. Um, God, when did I be like, okay, I want to be an actor? I, I think it might have been Carol Burnett. <sighs> oh, wow. I, I don't know why. I do know why, but I think it was, um, I remember watching the Carol Burnett show, which actually is like before my time. Yeah. Really. But it was on and I remember, I feel like she would break the fourth wall, you know, in all of those skits, you'd see it sort of leak out. There was a little bit, and I felt like she was breaking the rules. And, and you know, yeah. she used to do as the stomach turns. Yes, which was oh, so cool. funny. That's As right. As a stomach turns. <laughs> I don't think I even registered it at the time. Look at that. She did. Look she at that. All, you, she was in became, all my children. You became Orthodox Jewish. <laughs> and I did As the Stomach Turns. She, um, she was an All My Children fan, but she did do on that show. Um, I will tell you, because I did a tribute to Agnes Nixon, I got to interview Carol on the telephone, oh, which just oh, was wow. beyond Magic, any, right? Well, to, to have your phone ring in, you know, hello, Alan, it's Carol, <laughs> was That's like- That's so cool. I met yeah. her once, actually. I, One of my best friends is Blake Edwards and Julie Andrews' daughter. And so we went out to lunch and Carol joined us at lunch. Wow. And I remember she was wearing a red dress and she was just fabulous. And I just, because it was during my time, the Carol Burnett show, and I watched it every Saturday night and I was just floored. I couldn't, I could barely speak. It, she came, she, I ended, I was in a small acting school in LA when I was 19 for a year and she came and spoke. Um, wow. And I was sitting in the very front and all of her, like right by her feet and all of the stories that she told there's tremendous magic, you know, pain and magic in her life about, mm -hmm. you know, getting an anonymous check in the mail that allowed her to, you know, get to where she needed to go, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the unfortunate part of that story is that I was, as I was sitting in the front, my buddy Dane, who was also at the school, we had gone surfing that day. We decided that was the first day we had ever surfed. And we went in the water, even though the water was brown and foamy. Oh my um, God. We just were like, no, we said we were going to do it. So over the course of her three hour interview, we both just started sweating and coming down with some pollution induced sickness. So by the end of it, we were just like looking at each other across the room, <laughs> holding it together. Um, it's not really a necessary part of the story, but I like to do No, that. it is. I, 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 it's I a like very necessary you, part. Yeah, I like when you take us there. Just unnecessary, the unnecessary. Terry, to, to go back to your experience on Texas, what do you think you learned at Texas that helped you throughout your career? I think confidence, mostly, um, you know, confidence that I'm, I, I have the ability to learn that many lines and to do a character and to, 
enjoy what I'm doing. And uh, but yeah, confidence. Who did you work with on that show? Mostly, it was Michael Woods. It was uh, who, who's who's a fantastic actor. He's wonderful. He is wonderful. I love him. And uh, it was mostly the younger sort of set. And then I worked with Pam Long. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Pam Long was my sister on it. Wow. And Pam Long wrote for Guiding Light for many years. Yes. Yes, she did. She was a smart woman. <laughs> we gave her her first baby shower. Harley, Harley, uh, Jane and I, and uh, I think that was it. We gave her her baby shower. Oh, wow. With her, with Jay Hammer, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. With her son, son, uh, I'm trying to think which is the oldest, maybe CJ, I could be wrong. And Jen, if you look back on those three years, you know, and where you are now working on Yellowstone and FBI Most Wanted, you know, what pops into your mind of what, you know, what you learned from your time in Oakdale that, you know, you couldn't do without knowing? That I couldn't do without knowing. God, I, when I look back, I mean, it was so long ago. And it was also, there was such a lull in my work life. I, I couldn't get a job for years after that. I, I really was so nervous going through the world. Um, but when I look back, I mostly like just shake my head like, Landon, like, come on, you couldn't have read a book on like basic set etiquette? Like, don't show up to set, and I still do this, with hair that's that dirty. <laughs> like, you know, maybe maybe take care of your skin so that the makeup artists aren't like oh god come on you know exfoliate um but uh you know i learned a lot about really just jumping you every time you do a scene on a soap you're totally jumping and you have no idea um where you're going, you know, on some level, because you're doing it for the first time, really on its feet when you're rolling, right? Yeah. I mean, we'd block it, we'd camera mark it, um, but that was it. That was, yeah. and it was, um, it was so great. And I learned about, and I still feel this way, and maybe some camera ops will be like, mm, no, she doesn't. Uh, but I also, but I feel like it's really important to, to, you want to get to the heart of the scene and you want to do that really well, but you also want to get everybody out. I still feel that way. You want to, you want to get people out so that they can go home. You don't want to hold up set. And that is something that I think that I learned on the soap that I feel like some other people didn't learn in their career paths. Um, because as long as those hours were, they're not 16 hours. Right. You know, they're not. Right. And Be being prepared, being on time yeah. are two things that make a difference in not only your own life, mm -hmm. but in hundreds of other people's lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and not hold and, and really being clear about your priorities, you know, like the scene's going to work. I got to and let's get people out on time. Yeah. If the scene is good, good. I don't like if I felt like it wasn't my greatest thing, but they got it and they're happy, you know, and it's a different call at different times based on it. But that's something that I think is important. Mm. Terry, at As the World Turns, you, you also worked with Roger and Jesse Lee and Colleen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything stand out in your mind working with, with those fellow? I think, you know, working with Colleen was a hoot. It was just a hoot. Um, we had funny stuff together. And I, I actually looked at some, I can't remember when, how long ago, but they were really funny scenes in the limousine. Like, they were hilarious. So uh, she was a good sport about all of my shenanigans well from one crazy mother to another <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> one nut job to another yeah, yeah. you know terry every time you and colleen would um be doing a scene you know, in the studio in jc studios 
for, you know, there's monitors sort of all around in different corners. Everybody would stop and watch. It was like, really? Oh yeah. It's a popcorn scene. Like, oh, that's you fabulous. Know, because it was like, I mean, it was like, you know, it was like, we knew a fight was happening. We knew it was going to be really fun and a little weird. And we knew that it wasn't going to be totally depressing. Right. You know, oftentimes right. on a soap, it's like someone's in a hospital bed or yes. like something very, very sad is happening. Um, but there was, there was, it was like a, it was like all of those scenes felt like action scenes between the two of you. Oh, I thank you. I love that. The popcorn. Thank you. Love yeah, that. popcorn scene. Yeah, That's popcorn great. scene. Thank you. Great, great description. And, and Jen, talk about your relationship with uh, Jesse Lee and your oh. sister, Mara West. Oh, um, loved and having and, and just having the opportunity to really build both of those very different relationships. You know, it, it's one of those moments where, you know, and, and it holds with Terry as well, where everybody in that cast is amazing, but there are times where it's like you, the person running the deal really, really, really is smart and knows where you're gonna have chemistry. And and in immediate chemistry. I mean, I had immediate chemistry with you, Terry. Mm -hmm. Whether it translated, or I think it did. But even if it didn't, I had immediate chemistry with you. Jesse and I had immediate chemistry. There was an immediate bond. We were both, you know, fatherless kids. Spent most of our childhood without a father, and that bonds you right away. Yeah. Um, and we were both in that young group we were both much more worried than the other young people. Just, we were really worried about things in general. Um, and Maura, I remember the first time I, I, I hit set with Maura and, and I had so much respect for her and I was afraid of her in, because I didn't know her, I was afraid of her though. And I remember we did that first scene and it was just like, let's, we're gonna have a blast going at it. And, and, and I loved working with her. And, and I tell everyone to this day, Maura West, in my book, might be the best, best soap actor around. I agree. Book. I completely agree. The stuff that I had with her, I was just, I was, oh, first of all, I was blown away by her beauty. Her beauty was extraordinary. Yeah. And, and her acting was so good. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I loved working with her. She's one of those people, Terry, that, and sometimes, you know, sometimes you'll do a scene with an actor and, and you'll see it and you're, they're amazing. But on the day when you were shooting it, you didn't actually feel like there was something hitting you or that there was consequence or they were really threatening you. With Maura, you felt like she was really saying it to you. Yes. Like, I agree. She was not giving a performance to you. It was, <laughs> it it was, was reality. Yeah. Yeah, she would actually scare you or, and she, it's like, she'd look at you and then look at you again. It's right. like that, like, what's that layer that, that like lizards have, you know, that double <laughs> eyelid. Yeah. It's like the one eyelid would open and then the second one would open. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great description. <laughs> that is That's great. I should just get a job as a, dis I'll just write these descriptions. <laughs> Have you talked to Jesse Lee? Oh my, me? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. I feel like, you know, I, we don't talk that often. I feel like I called him the other day. We check in, I feel like quarterly. Oh, that's and we awesome. just sort of like pick up where we left off and we sort of download on the other one, the, the kind of personal stuff going on in our lives and bounce ideas back and forth. And then we don't talk again for four months and then we talk again, but, um, but He'll he'll be a life. He's a he's a lifer as a friend. That's awesome, Terry. You also appeared on one of the best primetime soaps of all time, Dynasty, as one of the Carringtons. What what do you remember about that whole experience? Uh, it was challenging. I mean, you go on a show that's that is established and has an incredible following. And there's an enormous amount of responsibility. It was, my daughter was five months 
old at the time that I started Dynasty, or six months old. And, uh, you know, my stuff ended up being mostly with Joan. And that was that was uh, heavy duty. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, but, you know, it was interesting being on a show that was so popular. And um, I remember being recognized for the first time that I, I went out to buy some lipstick at a mall and I was like at Macy's and I had the mirror, you know, sort of in front of me and I was putting the lipstick on and I could see behind me <laughs> people were gathering. And I thought, what, who, who's here? You know, what's the, oh my God, it's me, you know, and gave out autographs or whatever. But that was the first time that, that was an incredible freaky, experience. Freaky, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, it was totally freaky. Yeah, I could totally imagine. Joan came over and did Guiding Light for a short period of time. Oh, right. She did. She did, yeah. Jen, we, we have to go to Yellowstone. Wait, before yeah. we go to Yellowstone, really quickly. Terry, but, your daughter's yes. name is Molly. Yes. Can, is she still performing? Oh, yes. Can, can we just take a moment to plug Molly here? Because <laughs> Terry has a daughter who is so insanely talented. Thank you. And, like can sing like you can't believe. She's um, just starting a new musical right now, a Duncan Cheek musical called Whisper House. It's gonna be in New York. And she's just oh. starring in a new limited series for Apple TV. Called what? It, the name of the book was called Five Days at Memorial, but I don't know what they're calling the show. I can't. What's I can't Molly's last name? Hager. Hager. H-A-G-E-R. Mm -hmm. Great. Everybody look out for that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's, what thank is it you, like? Jen. What is it like watching? I just remember her? being blown away by her. I was like, thank oh you so God. much. That's so sweet of you. What's it like watching her? Yeah. What's it like watching your daughter follow? It's like I'm a nervous wreck. I can't <laughs> breathe. I'm like holding on to the seat. I'm so afraid something is not going to, you know, that something's going to happen. And she's always incredible. She was on Waitress for four years. She was in Waitress for four years. Um, and going opening night to that, I was like, oh my God. But she's proven me that she's, you know, she's incredibly talented. So I'm did, really happy. Did you always know from a young age she would follow you? Yeah. From when she was about four years old, she started performing Dick Tracy Madonna songs and she would stand behind. <laughs> behind a curtain and she would come out and she would like do That's this whole fabulous. number. And I was like, oh my God, she's doing Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> you have to check her out, Alan. I, I mean, will, I will. I worked just... at Disney during that time, Terry, when I worked on Dick Tracy, I was in the PR department. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so that makes me smile. That music was great. It was great. Music. That great. song was yeah. fantastic. Fantastic. I will check her out, Jen. Thanks for bringing that up. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. Jen, uh, Terry and I were both talking backstage to you, but also before you got there, about your incredible accent on Yellowstone. But And, and before I forget, uh, for people watching, Wendy Moniz is going to join me Friday, <gasps> who also plays the governor on Yellowstone. And Wendy and I bond regularly over Stephen Sondheim. Oh, oh my I God. Love that. I love that. Uh, and how sad uh, that he passed. I know. Yeah, totally. Oh, I'll that bring that so up to bad. her on Friday, Jen. Yeah. I'll bring that up to her. I worked with her when she was at Guiding Light. So I to have both of you on that show has been a lot of fun. And I'm telling you, I watched the first season and then knowing we were doing this, they they replayed it all. So we taped it all. And my husband and I literally binged two, three, and all of four up until this. Like I oh, could my. not I could not stop. It is addictive. It becomes really really addictive even when you read the yeah, even when you read the scripts um i re you read them in a way that's like sort of compulsive and bingey uh -huh. because it just has that natural like what's gonna happen element to it um, I, I i have to read you um jerry just posted speaking of yellowstone i hope jen lasts through the season hashtag save teeter so, <laughs> my, um, my manager asked me if my manager this morning is like, "Have you heard about this save hashtag save teeter thing?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> and then I got like sort of like 
is this going to, like, am I going to get some hashtags? And then I went on Instagram and I was like, searched hashtag save teeter. And it was like, there are seven posts. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Nate, they're probably like my mom with like nine different families. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love your mom. Say hello to her. I will. She's for me mom. too. And say yeah. hello to me. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> oh, hi, Cindy. Um, Jen, when, when the audition or whatever came up for Yellowstone and it says this character of Teeter, what did it say about that accent or, or what was the description of her? Oh, God. I can't remember the description. I really can't, but it was enough that led me to make the choice to put some cud in her mouth, um, which I, I used gum for the chewing tobacco. Um, and the, the sign- I love that, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that. I just threw it, I don't know why, I just was like, I know I needed that. And um, it was for John Papsidera who I, who, who gave me the, who put me in front runner. Um, and I uh, really, really care about his opinion. So I work extra hard for him. <laughs> um, and uh, I read the sides, you know, I mean, I saw Taylor's name and I was like, oh, oh my God. Um, and I read the sides and the sides were written phonetically and all of this, all, all of her dialogue is written phonetically. So when I first started to read it, I was like, that's not English. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said it out loud and I was like, oh, okay. And then uh, from that moment on, I, I always understood what Teeter was saying. Um, what's interesting is a lot of people didn't when they would read it, they'd be like, I have no idea what she's saying. Um, <laughs> I but, but I, but I kind of love that. I mean, she's from Texas. I, I mean, I love, you know, it's definitely. It's up, for debate. it's up for debate whether or not she's from Texas. She might be from across the border in our Oh, country. I thought somebody didn't, maybe I thought I There was, that. no, you're right. There was Texas. There was a lot of, there was a lot of, um, Teeter's location seems to be oh, okay. depending on, you know, the winds. Um, <laughs> but there was a place, uh, Alan, that you and I, I hadn't heard of before and you probably haven't either called Texarkana. Yeah, I've heard of it. There we go. Absolutely. Aaron knows about Texarkana. So, um, but you know, the we Taylor and I had talked, and it's funny he kind of threw out some imagined backstory, which was very much in line with what I had imagined, which was you know this is somebody who grew up with her dad and like four older brothers um, on a sheep farm, and you know she speaks the way her family speaks, and I actually come from um, on my mom's side. Uh, I come from a lineage of people who have an accent that is truly bizarre and I can't pin it to any location. Um, mm. My grandma Cole says, well, she passed away, but she said, she said, restaurant, restaurant, naked. Huh. And I mean, she's from Utah and lived in California for like 50 years. Yeah. Um, but she had this accent that, I know else. Hmm. What, you know, first of all, did you ride horses before? I, when I was really little, I grew up, I, we had horses. Everyone thinks my dad probably rode horses. He didn't. By the time, by the time I was born, my dad was 47 and his knees were gone and he was like, I ain't getting on a horse. You could even pay me. <laughs> um, but my mom rode and she took a really bad fall. Um, right after my dad passed away and she shouldn't have survived that fall, honestly. And so that was the end of horse days for, for the family. And, um, I Makes always, sense. Yeah. And, but I always, I always had this sort of vision of me on horse. Um, and so when this thing came around, uh, my manager said, can you ride? And I said, I, I rode when I was really little. And he said, okay, we're going to tell them that you are a professional horseback rider. <laughs> so they did. Wow. And then I had to catch up. Do, do you think of your dad while you are shooting this series? You know, it it's hard for me not to think, you know, you, here you are in a sort of, you know, it's very different. It's not a yeah. family. I mean, it is a family drama, but. Quite it different, is. quite different. Yeah. But there's, you know, and there's certainly the inspiration for Yellowstone, I think Taylor cites um, Bonanza um, as 
I think one of the sources, not Little House, but Bonanza, I think. Um, and, you know, I personally don't think about it because he passed away when I was so little. Mm -hmm. um, and I am of an age group in Los Angeles that wouldn't know who he is, actually. So, you know, like my age, my age group, they've not heard of any of his shows, you know, or they, they their names that don't register. Um, but yeah, I think because of that, and because I was so young, it just doesn't register for me, but people will point it out. And then I'm there. I'm like, Oh yeah. You know, I'm like, Oh yeah. Well, you know, I think we've talked, I mean, don't laugh, but I was a late bloomer to little house at this age. My husband oh. is nine years younger than me and grew up loving it. And really during the pandemic, he introduced me to Little House. And I think it's still hold, you know, it's incredible, but you're right. I mean, there are, there's an, you know, an age group. I mean, think of, you know, the Facts of Life last night that aired on ABC. Right. I'm, sh I'm sure there were a lot of people who had no clue what was on television last night. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't watch it, but I, as for uh, Little House on the Prairie, I have this best friend, Ron Zimmerman, and Ron and I, I would go to Ron's, he's a writer. Yeah, okay. I know you're looking like I know the name, but right, yeah, he's a writer. Um, I would go over to his house and he would say, okay, are you, do you want to cry? And I'd say, yeah, sure. Okay, I'll go for a good cry. He'd say, okay, we're going to watch Melissa Gilbert run away today. Yeah. <laughs> he would put it on and we'd both be like, God, what you saw her dad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a... I, 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 it's almost, yeah, there's like a little house challenge. I have somebody once introduced me to the Forrest Gump challenge, which is you can start Forrest Gump at any point in the movie. And I bet you can't make it 15 minutes without crying. You really? Can, and, yeah. And I, and I feel like that's probably true for little house. Probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, and things that aren't really that sad, but he made you really care. It, you know, when you're when you cast well and you have characters people care about, it, yeah. It, you know, everyone wanted him as a dad. You know, yeah. everyone wanted that understanding and that. I know. Me too, guys. You know, <laughs> he was you know. he kicked it when he, I was he, little. What yeah. a jerk! Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, and it's interesting because even like Yellowstone, I mean. It, it's cast so well, yeah. written so well, but you, you know, as much as the, there's not a lovable Dutton really, you know, you know, they're a, they're a tough family, but because it's written so well in Castaway, you actually really care about these people. Yeah, mm -hmm. you do. And you know, a lot, I've, I've, I've hung, hung out in the show for a couple of years now and I've, without getting into specifics, I've learned that there were, were a lot of, the most beloved actors on that show that were really hard fought for by Taylor that, you know, I don't know if it was studio or network or whomever, let's not. That, oh, that whomever. casting didn't, uh, that, right. Casting had, wanted a bigger name, casting yeah. wanted who knows, I mean, or, you know, mm -hmm. they wanted who knows what because for the numbers, mm -hmm. right? And that's fine, it's business, we work in business. But Taylor fought really hard for some of those people and boy, was he right. And it's such a testament to the fact, I mean, you look at very different, but you look at a show like Succession, which yes. is cast with incredible actors who are working actors and are certainly famous, but they aren't huge name draws. You're not going to grab huge numbers throwing out any of their names. And look at look at that show. You, you don't look at the, the characters there and, and see, you know, an actor, even, you know, Kevin Cosner, I don't see his other roles. I mean, I see him as John right. Dutton. It's it's amazing. I mean, yeah, it's it's just what's the overall experience been like for you? Oh my god, it's a it's it's been amazing. I mean, it was terrifying because it was just so high profile and the people involved and everybody was so nice and you know, a lot of the times working on that show because a, a lot of my stuff is is on horse or it is, you know, doing doing work, herding cattle. Um you know, it's, it feels like I'm working on a, a ranch a lot yeah. of days and, um, and that's sort of great. You kind of forget that there's a camera there 
Um, and it's so beautiful up there. Ah. It's been so welcoming. Um, every, every shot is like a, a picture. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. They, it really. They, you know, we have, um, I think there was a different DP before I got there. Um, but our DP, Christina Boros, she's, she's not only, a, I, I think she's wearing three hats now. I feel like she's even a producer. She is a DP and a director. And during COVID, because of co positives and whatnot, she had her episode she was going to direct, but she'd have to jump in last minute for a director who would have to be quarantined. And she, I mean, she oh. is incredible. And that is a woman's, that is a woman whose career we should all be following. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow, she, wow, wow, wow. And, and it's a lot of real, real cow, a lot of real cowboys and real ranch people there. Um, some of those guys in the bunkhouse, they are actors second. Um, Jake Ream, who's in the bunkhouse, I was just out in Texas and Jake Ream was helping me learn how to cut for a cutting competition. Um, and, and what so, does that mean? I'm going to explain it poorly. Um, and my coach, Wendy Birch, back in Texas, if she sees this, is going to be grumpy with me. Um, but uh, cutting is a sport that was probably born out of great use, which is separating a single cow from the herd. And as, because they're herd animals, they're desperately going to do everything they can to get back to the herd. And you, the horse and the cow sort of mirror each other in this sort of dance off, let's call it, until the cow kind of quits and stops trying to get to the herd. And that's, wow. that's cutting. It's an yeah. amazing, it's an amazing sport. It's wow, amazing. wow, wow. Incredible. Yeah. Terry, 1985. Yes. Ashton, Maine came about, North and South. Tell us about it. What What do you remember about the whole experience? Yeah, I mean, not only because you did the original in 85, then the two sequels in 86 and 94. Right, right. Uh, it, it was an incredible experience. I was 25 at the time. And wow. to be given, when I auditioned, I was wearing like, because it was a period costume, a period time, I sort of tried to put together my own period outfit and had a lace top and then a top over that. And while I was reading with the director and the producer, the top kept falling down. I had to keep pulling it up because it was lace and everything would show. And I would keep reading and I'd keep pulling it up. And finally it fell and I said, oh, forget it, screw it, leave it down. And I kept reading and boobs out you know, <laughs> and uh, before I left the building, they called the security person to get me to go to costumes to get fitted for a screen test. And that was like the most exciting. And I, I did the test and it felt like it went really well. And I didn't hear for three weeks or four weeks. And I was in. Can you imagine, Jen? I was insane. I was like, yeah. I guess I didn't get it then. And they're like, no, you're still in the running. I'm like, no, you don't wait that long to tell someone. And then I finally got it. And, you know, it was like a bunch of people my age or a little bit older. And we just ran around and had a blast. And we danced every night. And Patrick Swayze taught me how to, to dance, slow dance, a really great, sexy, slow dance, uh, dirty dancing before he was in dirty dancing. And um, we would go, we would have dinners every night with all the cast and huge, you know, bunch of people. Then we'd all go dancing and we'd dance off the alcohol that we consumed, which was quite a lot. And <laughs> then get up at 530 in the morning and stick your head in ice and then go to work. And it was great. That's incredible. <laughs> the head had to go into ice. And, Do you know and 25 is incredible. I know at 25 and I was making like, you know, per diem was more than I ever earned. So it was like really incredible. Wow. I love that. You know, when I started promoting Terry, that you would be here a mutual uh, person. We know Michelle Boyner. Told oh yeah. Me to say hello. Told me oh, to say hi, hello. Michelle, Michelle uh, did another documentary. Um, it's not a burden about taking care of your parents later in life. Oh, wow. It's a great documentary. 
it's not a burden. Um, and I met her doing that, but she told me about the documentary that you participated in about your yeah. friend, Greg Gower. Would you tell us about that? Because I thought it was fascinating. It always makes me it, so sad. Yeah, okay, yeah, um, sorry. But, no, it's okay. Uh, Greg had uh, AIDS and he decided that he wanted to go out in his own way. And so he sold everything and he and his dog got a uh, camper and traveled around to say goodbye to all of his friends. And so he came to New York to say goodbye to me. And it was, uh, when it was time to say goodbye, I looked at him and I said, how, how do you possibly, what do I say? He said, just say see ya and walk away. And I said, okay, that's what I'll do. And I waved backwards and kept walking. What a brave, brave, he Man, was incredible do. because he he then took his own life in in a in a safe sort of right. way in the way you, you're supposed to if you do that and um he was he was incredible he was an incredible guy the documentary is called a finished life i i was asking michelle because i wanted to see it and she sent me the trailer oh great really, really special um you know for somebody to just even that you could think that you could do that at that yeah. time. No, no, you know, I, I don't know that I would have that strength, you know, I mean, it's, right. it's really something to and a, and a um, testament to his strength, I think. Right. I agree. I absolutely agree. I incredible. Um, Jen, I have to ask you for Steven Bergman. <laughs> Stephen oh, Bergman. Stephen he, Bergman. Yeah. yeah. He, he is a huge, so was I, Animal Kingdom fan. Loved Animal Kingdom. And he wanted to know about the church heist and all that went into that. He said it was probably the only episode where they used hundreds of extras for those scenes. And he would love to hear if you remember how they put it all together. Oh, my goodness. I feel like my piece in it was I was not a part of the huge machine of the heist yeah, yeah I was not a part of uh, um so for me it was just sort of um going into this church you know and as a when when you're lucky enough to be an actor with dialogue you know they they set all the extras and then you walk into set and suddenly the space is real you know, and everyone's got their clothing on. And um, so um, I just, you know, I went in and prayed. That's what I did. That was my, you know, I wish I knew all of the kind of technical ins and outs, but um, mine was, mine was pretty, pretty easy, it, but it all felt very real because it was a huge, huge thing with all of those extras and a band on stage. And um, it was awesome. I wish I could answer that question more thoroughly for Steven. What did you, did you like that experience on that show? I love that show. And it was with Zimmer's son, Jake Weary. Oh my God, who is, what a hell of an actor. I mean, yeah. he's so good and he, he's so grounded. Um, and I didn't get to do scenes with him. I was just working um, with Sean Hattesey, who is a stone cold, <laughs> genius um and i got to see him very briefly recently that's all i'll say <laughs> it's not personal it's professional i got to see him professionally very oh. i want to clarify um oh, interesting but, i like that um but that it's funny i woke up this morning um and thought about myself which is what i do every morning and um i actually <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I woke up this morning and I don't know why, but I, I thought... You are I, the best. I, the best. I, the best. I, I miss talking to Jen Landon, I, I can talking. tell you. I, I, I woke up this morning and I, I don't... I With these other shows going on, all of a sudden I went, oh yeah, An Animal Kingdom. And that Amy probably is my favorite part I've ever played. Really? Yeah. What about her? She really was so real to me. Hmm. And, you know, that was another sort of magical audition where I hadn't, I didn't have an agent. I, I had a manager, but we were having a hard time. I mean, I think I had had two auditions that year. Um, hmm. I, I couldn't get into rooms. 
And um, my acting coach called me and was like, listen, Landon, there's a part on Animal Kingdom that you are perfect for. Get in on it. And I had the flu and I called my manager and I had had a general with John Levy years ago and he was friendly with the associate and he got me in. Wow. And it was, so I was in this place where I was actually looking at, um, I was looking at going back to school for neuroscience and neuroanatomy. And so I had this sort of slowness going on in my life that I always, that I seem to lose touch with, but I should really hang out there more. And I just imagined this life for her and I was like, I'm not going to get it. So I might as well just live it. And I did. And it was amazing. And it changed my life. Yeah. Hmm. Totally. I, Cause I was going to ask you, because you mentioned after world turns that it took you a long time. So was animal kingdom. No, there were little things in between there. There was, um, there was Banshee and uh, a, a, a revenge murder movie. I think I spit on your grave, you know, parts 99. Um, no, I <laughs> um, but uh, it, it, it was, you know, even after Banshee, I think it was after Banshee. Yeah. Cause Alexa, Alexa, Alexa Fogel in New York was giving me shots. Um, but I still couldn't get an agent. And, and, and that's, you know, I was exactly. part of, I was really irresponsible career wise post soap. And, and then I quit, I just straight up quit for a while and took a long drive. Hmm. And that was great. That was really great. I bet well, it was, I bet it was, it was really yeah. helpful. It was because when I went, I felt like I'm doing this for someone else, for something else. I couldn't feel myself. I couldn't feel my legs under my own life. And I really was gonna do anything else. I could have done anything else. And I was sitting in a cabin in Paradise Valley, Montana, which is where Yellowstone is set. And this is eight years before. And I, there was just a random Airbnb and I was living on a cattle and sheep ranch. And I was remember sitting in the loft and there were, um, and I really was sitting there and I was like, God, I haven't been struck by anything. I've been on the road for four months. I don't know what else, you know, what am I going to do or whatever. And there was like this very quiet voice that was like, if you don't do this thing that you're really scared of and makes you really uncomfortable, there's a big chance you're going to be managing boredom. Hmm. For the rest of your life and boredom for me is dangerous it's bad habits in a powder keg you know <laughs> explosive um, yes yeah so uh yeah and so sitting in montana wow yeah well i know fans are very happy to see you on screen for sure are you doing still doing fbi most wanted I am. I love that job. I, I love, I love Julian, who's the lead on that show. Everyone on that show and is he, great. He's your man, right? On that show? He's my man. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it's, you always, you know, you get to that point on when you're the love interest on a show and you're like, okay, I've been here for a while. Can't be forever. And then you start to be like, who's going to take him? Who's flirting <laughs> with in the script? <laughs> um, it's like more jealous than I am in my own life. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's been great. It, it's Terry, you're not in New York, are you? Yeah. Uh, well, right now I'm in Miami, but I still live in New York. Yeah. What is happening? We're going to see each other in real life then. Are you in New York? That's where they shoot FBI. I've been going back and forth. Oh, I had no you idea. Are. I thought you were in Florida I all the time. Jen, I want oh to meet for God, drinks. No. Well, we're meeting. We're having drinks when I get we're back. We're drinking. We're getting drunk. We're getting tattoos oh together. I didn't realize okay, you were girl, in New York. I am there. Can I share one? When you, Terry, when you said that you drank on that show when you were 25, I was like, oh, thank God. I was really hungover a lot of mornings. <laughs> in, Brooklyn, in Brooklyn? Yeah. I didn't know that I was hungover. It was just, I had to drink to go to sleep. 
right? Like this uh-huh. was something that later in life I looked at. And I remember sitting on that couch. I'll just call it the private couch. And I looked at you and I was like hung over and I was like, Terry, I was like, I wish they made alcohol on a pill. And you were like, they did, honey. They were called <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. That would be uh, me. Or I love that. Still, I'm trying to find some sort of quaalude laying around just to try. Quaalude was, yeah. Mm-hmm. Jen, what's that. it like filming in New York? Oh my God, I love it. It's such a, it feels like. Does it feel like coming home? It feels like coming home, um, except that like I can leave the studio in Greenpoint and like walk into a neighborhood that like. I can do all my shopping at and then go back to where I'm staying. Midwood was so far from where we all lived. Oh my God. Um, but it's great. I love and, it. And far from anything that we, because it was a Hasidic community, there wasn't yeah. a lot you, you shopped for there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's but nearby, they're nearby, but we never had time to walk around or anything in the early hours. Um, but I, I love being back in New York and there's something about working in New York that just makes you feel kind of like a repairman actor. It like, you know, like you show up with your tool belt and you do your job <laughs> and you go and you do a good job and you do a better job because you're thinking of it that way. You know, That's great. But, you know, yeah. as opposed to sometimes in, you know, in LA, you're in your car and you come up with this whole special narrative about yourself in your car. Yes. And like in New York, you get to the audition and you've been on the subway and you're sweating and you stink. And, you know, I just love it. Yeah. I agree. Right? Yeah, absolutely. The best city. It is it the is, best city. It is the best it's city. The best city. It, I mean, the pandemic really, I mean, I started working in New York in 86 and, you know, moved out to New Jersey uh, about six years ago. And it's the longest period that I did, you know, because of the pandemic that I, in all those years that I had to not step foot on that island, it was just the oddest Oddest, oddest, oddest feeling. Uh, T- Terry, I, I have a couple questions. Um, being on the cover of TV Guide. Yeah, that was a you, cool thing because- Do you remember like walking into a supermarket? And- yes. <laughs> I remember standing there like, you know, there were a bunch of TV guides in the aisle and I'm standing there getting ready to check out. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> notice me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's me on the cover, you know, and nobody's nobody's saying anything like you resemble or you look like. No, there was nothing. I was waiting for it, but there was nothing. I would have picked it up and been like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Notice anything? Anything? Uh, that was a really cool thing. That was a really cool thing. Yeah, I mean, and it's, yeah, it, it's got to be. And I, I love that you're visiting your mom and. You know, for for parents, those things are very, very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, they were thrilled. Yeah, that that's really cool. Before I let you go, please tell me about the company you own with your sister. Great, it's called Sisters Alchemy. There's underneath. There's the uh, website, website, and yeah. we make soap, all natural, no chemicals. Everything is, even the color is done from like, the green is done from cucumber skins. And we, we have some with uh, magical intention. Um, that's a protection one. And we do a salt bar that's a protection one also. Anyway, they're great soap bars. And that's what I do with my sister. What, where'd the idea come from? My sister, she was in Miami and she was visiting my folks and she went and picked a lot of things that are, you know, representative of of Miami. And um, she made a soap and she said to me, you know, let's, do you want to make a soap? And I was like, sure, what the hell? So I made it and I fell in love with making it. It was an incredible experience. And so I went back to New York to my apartment and started making them like in the middle of the night at three in the morning and whatever. And I had hundreds of them. And so I went onto Facebook and I said, look, I made soap and I'm selling them for five bucks. Anyone want them? And they were gone. And I did it again with hundreds of them and everyone bought them out. So I said to my sister, let's do something about this. Let's make this, you know, a company and let's do it. And she was like, yeah, that's cool. 
That's smart. And great, great gifts for the holidays. Great gifts. Yeah, really, because the branding and the packaging is really cool. Mm. And uh, Jen brought up your daughter. Would you like to work with her? I would love to work with her, but ask her the question. I think it's it, it would be a different answer. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's always hard with your mom or whatever, you know. Uh, I would love to work with her because she is so talented and it would be a great thing. It'd be fun to watch. Yeah. Do you still audition or put your name out for things? You know, I try, but as I've gotten older, I find that there is nothing for me. And that's a really hard thing to deal with. Um, because when I was younger, it was like the world was there at my feet. And so now it's, it's, it's a real, it's a struggle. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That stinks. Really stinks when there's talented people and, you. you know, really. I mean, it's also like a test. It, it's also just evidence of the fact that, you know, however far we've come in trying to write parts for women, you know, women who aren't, you know, whatever, under 40 who register 30 or whatever, that right. this age of what, yeah. that we, that, that it's, that we just, all of our stuff is still skewed so young. Yeah. In a way that I never really found particularly interesting because I, I was always, my, I mean, I just feel like it's really messed up. We're missing out on stories that are so much richer Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than a lot of the stories that we tell. That's mm. yeah. That's a really nice way of putting it because, you know, I'm sorry, but a romance, they're 22. They did, didn't work out. Tragic. Yeah. <laughs> right. They're 22. It's not tragic. Right. 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 Things way a different thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Later on. Yeah. Jen, Jen, one last question. A fan, uh, asked if we will ever see you on your brother's show when when calls the heart. Oh my god, this is horrible. That I'm like, is it still on? Oh, <laughs> is it not? I don't know that, but the fan Arlene. I don't on. either. So my my siblings and I we, we we don't talk we don't talk business. We'll talk shop, but we don't talk business. And I cut my cable cord oh, like five years ago because I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> um, yeah. so if, it's, if it's not on the Netflix, I have a hard time. Um, absolutely, yeah, totally. I want to direct an episode. That would be great. That would be amazing to get behind the camera. That's that fantastic. Would be, right? Sorry, that would be amazing. Like, Ladies, thank you so much for spending this time. I'm going to put you. you backstage. I'm just going to say sign, yeah. sign off, and we'll we'll go from there. Okay. Thanks so much for being here. Bye, ladies. Pleasure. Thanks for tuning in today, everybody. Don't forget tomorrow, Catherine Gardner, Carrie Genzel, Lauren Roman, and T.C. Warner from All My Children will be with me. Thank you to Terry Garber. Thank you to Jen Landon. Love having the both of them here today. Have a great night, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow.